Hi everyone, today I wanted to talk about how I teach students um, how to use Follow Destiny, just the basic search. I do like to scaffold this because I find Destiny can uh, be pretty overwhelming for some students, so I usually just start with the basics, which is the basic search. So first I show students this screen and I explain to them that what they're looking for is the catalog and the catalog is a list of all of our books in our library. Um, I point out to them that today we're only focusing on the basic search, so where they can find um, these different types of searches on the right hand side. So I just point out that there's power, visual, copy categories and number, but for today it's just the basic. And then I also point out on the left hand side that there are a few options here too. So when we're searching our catalog, we use the library search, but then I go into what Destiny Quest and Discover mean a little bit later on in the year when we feel comfortable using the basic search. So starting off with just some basic terminology here, um, search bar, depending on what they're searching for, I explain to them that they're going to use one of these options. Our main goal here is trying to be um, efficient and getting an accurate search result. I explained to them that we can try and use these uh, filters here to help narrow down their search, but most likely they probably will not use them. So I tell students to begin by asking yourself, what is the purpose of my search? Am I looking for a specific book or am I looking for a subject or topic? Too often, um, I think students are getting used to just using Google. They type in um, any keywords and then just immediately hit enter. And we know that if that happens, they automatically do a keyword search. But sometimes that may not be the most, um, give you the most accurate results of what you're looking for. So I like to go over the different types of searches. So keyword, I explained to them, it searches for the term anywhere in the title, author, subject, series, and notes. So it's the most broad search. Title narrows it down to just the term in the title of books. The author, self-explanatory for authors and illustrators. Subject, so it searches for titles about a particular topic, subject, person, or place and series, right? So searches for titles in a particular series of books. So when searching, I really try and drive home the point of be mindful of which option you need. It'll help you get to your result quicker and more accurately. The example I love to use is Sisters because it is a well-known graphic novel by Raina Telgemeier. So I go through the different search options with this book. Starting off, um, I tell them that we are going to be taking a look at the keyword search. So if I just hit in sisters and I press enter, this is what shows up. So in our library, we're quite a new library. So in this case, there were 154 books that had the keyword sisters in there. So I explained to them that this could have, um, the information could come from the title, author, summary, subject, everything. Uh, we are lucky that this one did pop up first, so it would be an easy find. However, sometimes that's not always the case. Now if I search the same term, sisters, and I hit the title search, there's only four books. So it really narrowed it down for us, and it's a lot more manageable. By some chance, when we did the author search, um, we ended up coming up with one search, uh, one search result because we did have somebody uh, with that name as well. And lastly, a subject search. So uh, what was great for students to see here is that Sisters wasn't one of the top um, search results here. We did see, you know, something like Beezus and Ramona, a book about sisters. So I think that's important for um, students to see as well as, you know, a well-known example like Frozen, right? We have uh, books and movies and so forth that are just like about sisters. It's not the particular book that we are looking for. Um, I do like to go in and just say, you know, this is where this information is coming from. Um, just to show students a little bit more in depth, but I don't go in too much depth because I feel like it can overwhelm them pretty quickly. 
Lastly, we do a series search. So what comes up are 12 books. And um, it's interesting, once again, to see what the results show up as. Once again, we do not see Sisters as well with by Raina Telgemeier pop up. But we do see something like The Sisters Grimm. And um, yeah, what I do like about this too, it just gives students the opportunity to see other books that do come up and maybe something that they're interested in actually reading. So after that, I take a look, uh, we look at the uh, search results and I point out to them that call number. So this is where I do teach students about what these call numbers are, where they're found on the books, so that once I explain in Follett, they have an understanding of what that means. So when they get their search result here, they're going to notice the title and author, it gives you the year published, um, the reading level, interest level, as well as the rating for some of the books. Uh, what I also point out, really important, is it shows you how many copies there are in the library and then how many are checked out. So um, I do wish that this was a feature that was a lot bigger because students do tend to miss it. But uh, once you show them, they're pretty good at uh, finding it. So this is then that next step. What do I do with the search results? So great, I find my book, but how do I actually find in the library? So I go back to that call number. We have GN. We know that means the graphic novel and TEL are the first three letters of the author's last name. So I explain to students that you're going into the graphic novel section and then everything is arranged alphabetically. And um, in our library, we do have the uh, letters quite visible so students can easily find what they're looking for. I always have to give the huge important note that spelling does matter. So in saying that, Telgemeier is a very difficult last name to spell for students. So we have the correct spelling, great, it shows up with nine search results versus Telgemeier, and which is the incorrect spelling, and right away it shows up as no matches found. And we know that that's not the case. We do actually have the book that they're looking for, but because it is spelled incorrectly, I think we're used to using Google a lot and with the autocorrect, but in a program like this, it does not work. I do also like to show them the cool feature of checking out the top 10 titles at um, a school that they may be at. So it's always, um, again, these little things that I feel are hidden in Destiny, but I feel it's a great way to kind of end the, end the lesson for students to see, hey, these are the top 10. Maybe you want to read one of these books too. So what I like to leave off with them is searching takes practice. So really thinking about what they want to search, brainstorm those words that describe what they're searching for. And you can start by using just one to two keywords. You can either narrow or broaden your search. So looking at like animals, canine, dogs. So we're going from broad to more um, specific. They can also try singular and plurals, dog versus dogs. And we do go into later the Boolean operators and or are not in the power search. So I always recommend to them, revise your search, right? Try different keywords, especially if spelling may be an issue. Don't just give up after that first search. And when they're going to find their books on the shelves, take a look at the books beside the ones that maybe they want, because oftentimes um, it's that serendipitous way that we can end up finding some really great reads uh, that we may not expect. So hope you found this video helpful. This is how I go over the basic search first. We do some practice. I give them a little bit um, of time to play on Destiny, get kind of a feel for it, and then we move on to something a little bit more challenging and show them a little bit more depth. Thanks so much for listening.